Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It is such a joy to be here with you and to bring on with us Dr. Roger Bellica. Thank you for joining us. You have some incredible information to share. I've already heard this a couple times, and I'm, I'm really delighted to share it with our community here today. I'm just very excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I want to share a little bit about you, what I know about you for people that may not be familiar with your work. But I know you through our mutual dear friend, Dr. Neil Nathan, and uh, he introduced us. And once we got to talk, I thought, wow, this is an extraordinary person. And you told me a little bit about your background. And what I remember is that you were the chief of medical operations at NASA. And that's where you really learned so much about electromagnetic radiation because you were researching it and working with astronauts on the effects on them. And you're a functional medicine physician, and that was able to translate into some of the work that you're doing today. And you have this incredible clinic. I've referred people there. Um, one of my best friends I referred up there lives near you in Denver. And um, it's Tri-Life Health is the clinic in, in Fort Collins, Colorado, um, which I can highly recommend for people with sensitivities and mold toxicity and MCAS. Today, we're going to focus on... Um, this whole piece of electromagnetic radiation, how it affects our health, but most importantly, how we can mitigate it in ways that don't require us to rewire whole houses that aren't requiring $20,000, $30,000. A lot of our community members have done these massive mold remediations and there's not a lot of budget left. And so we're gonna talk about ways that we can do this. And they've been game changers for me, Roger. Um, I know I shared with you when I've had, in the past, I had EMF exposure, I would have so much brain inflammation that I would get neurological symptoms that were very MS-like, multiple sclerosis-like, and I would have trouble speaking. Um, if it was really significant, my legs would stop working. And this could be just from sitting down in front of a laptop with Wi-Fi turned on and not realizing the Wi-Fi was on. And within five minutes, I would lose use of my legs. Wow. Many people don't have that extreme symptoms, but there's a lot of damage that's occurring. And, and Dr. Theo Herides, who's one of our lead researchers in mast cell activation syndrome, did an unpublished study that just um, definitively proved that EMFs are degranulating mast cells in the brain. Um, I want to dive into all of that. But is there any background you want to share with our community before we, we've got some slides to share with people um, before we jump in here that I skipped over. I, I just want to emphasize to everyone that this effect on the human body, on your health and your function from electromagnetic radiation exposure is a big deal. It's a very real thing and it's permeating everything. It's sabotaging other treatments. Uh, I've got many patients who we've worked with for whether it's mold or autoimmune or Lyme infections, chronic virus, COVID long haul stuff, which is big now. Um, and often we find either at the beginning, we need to first help them neutralize the electromagnetic radiation exposure they're getting if they want to have success in their therapy, or sometimes at the end of the therapy, when the lime's gone, the COVID long haul's cleared, whatever, and yet they're still coming in and saying, but I'm still fatigued. I still, I'm better but I still don't feel right. My brain's foggy, uh, variety of symptoms. I'm not sleeping well. I'm anxious. I'm tired, whatever. And we find at that point, what's left that's affecting them is the electromagnetic radiation effect on their cells. And, um, and I think a lot of these conditions we've just talked about um, sensitize people even more to that. So it, it needs to be addressed as part of a complete um healing program for people. So this is a big deal. I'm glad people are waking up and paying attention to this. It really is. And I see it being one of the triggers for people's limbic, when we have this limbic dysregulation, these extreme sensitivities, EMF exposure seems to worsen it. And for people to reboot all of that and get out of their sensitivities, it's not just getting out of mold. We also have to really make sure we're minimizing the EMFs. And I'm seeing a lot of problems with that in the big cities, particularly the Northwest and out in the Portland, Seattle area, there's the highest EMF levels of the country. Um, not just all the 5G, but also the radio antennas, which we don't think about a lot. 
How cl- and a lot of it's proximity. How close are we? And I saw a big uptick in sensitivities and, and particularly these really hypersensitivities after the 5G rollout started. And now we've got Starlink rolling out in these satellites, which I'm still not clear how that's affecting us. So we've got to know how to take action to take care of ourselves. We're going to dive into some great information for anyone who just joined us. We have Dr. Roger Billica with us, who is a functional medicine physician. We met each other through Dr. Neil Nathan, and uh, he's the former chief of medical operations at NASA, where they particularly are specifically were studying the effects of electromagnetic radiation. So this is one of our great experts in the country of the effects of EMFs on health. And that's, um, I just want to let people know where you're coming from in this information that we're going to share. So let me pop your slides up here. And then, um, Roger, you can just let me know when you're ready. Yeah, if, if we can, do, we'll go through these fairly quickly because we have so much to talk, but this will give people a solid background in what we're talking about and what it means. Let's go on with the next slide. So okay. here's our here's our definition. Well, well as we jump in, uh, Roger, I just want to ask people to let us know so we know how to um, hone this talk today for you is how EMF sensitive are you on a scale one to 10? If you could let us know, also give us a high on um, the the comments so we know who's on with us. It's always nice to see who's here. And we're gonna dive in as you guys are answering that for us. All right, Roger, so here's our definition. So you guys can read this, but but basically it is a form of energy that's at the speed of light. We're talking about electromagnetic radiation as opposed to scalar field, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But it shows up in the form of electric and magnetic fields. And it makes up these electromagnetic rays that we're we're used to, radio waves, visible light, gamma rays, but also now so many other forms that it's being presented in. It's uh, really accelerated in the past few decades. Okay. And it, it's going to have a lot of different effects. People are, some people are much more sensitive than others, and some are very little sensitive. But let's look at some of the effects of it. And what we're going to see here is the contrast with with the biomedical effect. So in Western medicine, classically, we look more at a biomedical model. We look at receptors and medicines or drugs or nutrients that interact directly with receptors and cause an effect, like a key going in the lock of of a car door. On the other hand, the next slide shows the concept with EMR. It it it's actually like the 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 uh, beeper you use to open the car door at a distance it sends a signal and it it creates the same effect as putting the key in the receptor so it still creates the response uh as biomedical biochemical but it's more being done through frequency and we can do a lot of effects either positive or negative on the cells on the on the uh, function of the human body with electrical uh, magnetic radiation okay So that's just a brief overall concept. So in fact, your body is an electromagnetic system. That's why we can do EEGs and EKGs and MRI scans. And so while our body seems to be solid, it's actually a semiconductor network. Uh, The fascia uh, plays a big role in that. Um, And it, uh, it, uh, let's keep going here. Um, So it can, so our body conveys and stores information from these frequencies, it stores current, it stores charge. It's the major way the human body works because even biochemically is the transfer of electrons at some point. So the movement of electrons is still electromagnetic. So it's a big deal and there's a lot you can do, again, positively using these concepts, but also the effects of these unhealthy electromagnetic radiation effects on our body. So let's get into some of that. I just want to... Okay. We have a wide audience here and we've got people who are really advanced and people who are practitioners and we have people, brand new beginners. And what you just said, Roger, is so important. We're not talking about enough that we're so focused on biochemistry. We're so focused on methylation. Are we going to take curcumin and are we going to take quercetin and all these things? And that's a really important, but all that runs on the bioelectrics of our of our bodies, which very few practitioners know anything about, first of all. But it's almost like we keep changing light bulbs, trying to get the lamp to turn on, 
but the current's not flowing to the lamp and if, or the current's off. So the lamp keeps flickering or even I've had experiences where I put my cell phone too close to my laptop and there's this interference that happens. And, and we get this interference in our bodies that interferes with all of the functioning, including whether our, and our mast cells recognize it as a threat. So they're going to degranulate in the presence when we have mast cell activation syndrome. So do I have that right, Roger? I think so. I mean, one way of looking at it is that, and this is, you know, people say, I'm not sure about this uh, electrical frequency stuff. And yet when you challenge, say, well, then do you order MRI scans? Well, of course I do. Well, that what is that? That's a magnetic resonance image. It's actually putting the human tissues in a magnetic field and measuring resonant effects, frequencies. Um, every tissue in the body has a frequency. Even the cells are creating frequencies. Even the molecules are creating frequencies. But the conglomeration of that into a tissue, that tissue will have a frequency. And if everything's working the way it should, that will be a healthy resonant frequency that is working with the rest of the body. If that tissue becomes toxic, infected, sick, inflamed, whatever, it actually changes the frequency of the tissue, which can be measured. There's different ways of addressing that. And it can be addressed using frequencies as well as medicines and things. So it's a it's a, a wonderful field to understand. And a lot of the breakthroughs, I think, that are here now and are coming will be through the understanding and use of these concepts for human health um, and also understanding the harmful effects of, of uh, non-resonant, non-healthy EMR on the human body. And there, I just... I'm so excited about this, Roger. So there's some clinics that really focus on using resonance and, and sound and vibration healing. And what they're doing is they're, they're working with people with extreme chronic conditions, um, cancer, uh, it, it's stage four cancers and things like this. And they're getting amazing outcomes. But we're talking $30,000, $40,000 to go be at this clinic for two weeks. At the same time, we could do all this extraordinary stuff, but if we're standing in high levels of radiation that are impacting the natural functioning of our bodies, why don't we start there? Why don't we start with reducing? It's almost like I tell people, you know, if you're exposing yourself to things that are harming you, it's just like we're drinking bleach and then we're trying to take 50 supplements to offset the bleach. Let's take the bleach out of the picture. Let's take the radiation out of the picture. We can't get rid of all of it and live in modern life, but we can really lower those levels and improve the functioning of our bodies. It's it's so true. When you're trying to help someone heal from a chronic degenerative condition that regular medicines are only helping symptoms, perhaps, you have to look at the categories of, of toxins. There's environmental toxins. Um, there's mold toxins, there's infectious toxins, there's parasitic toxins, there's emotional toxins, and there's electromagnetic radiation toxins. And, and a, an integrative functional doctor will make sure they look into all of those areas for a, a complete uh, holistic approach to, to a person. And if you ignore the EMR part, um, you're, you're, you're not going to have the success you're hoping for. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what else we can share with people. Here. Well, this is, again, just reminding people of the range of electromagnetic radiation. I don't know if you can see that, but it goes everything from, you know, gamma, x-ray, ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, uh, radio frequencies, and uh, other power sources down there. So there's a, you know, if, if you, we are so bombarded with this. Let's, let's keep moving here. This is one of my my favorite quotes, it, it comes out of the book, The Invisible Rainbow, which is a, a wonderful book that discusses the, the history of electricity in, in medicine. And it basically makes the point that the last time on earth that we lived in a natural, healthy electromagnetic uh, environment was back in the 1800s. And then since then, of course, we've had, uh, you know, uh, radio and then television and then internet and now all the the smartphones and the computer stuff and it's a it's a dramatic impact and we're not living in a a healthy natural electromagnetic radiation environment anymore it's been decades since that's the case and it's accelerating it's growing even more 
And so this sudden overwhelming of our own nurturing fields, um, dramatic impact on the very character of life. So this, again, I want to emphasize, this is, this is a big deal. Let's keep and going. we've seen this uptick in chronic illness increase with so many things, but the increase of toxins and the increase of electromagnetic exposure. And if you look at the symptoms, let's just list them here quickly. What we'll see is a lot of the common things that people come to their doctor for. I don't, I'm not sleeping well. I have headaches. I don't feel good. I'm anxious, my heart. And yes, there are other causes for these things, but again, often EMR is a part of it. And so they're real common. And then we look at some of the actual um, health problems that have been linked specifically to EMR on the next slide. Um, so I just want to ask people, um, okay. if you, do you have any of these symptoms? And if you want to take a screenshot, you can. Do you have any of these? Let us know if you're dealing with these. And um, then here's some of the health problems. I'm sorry I'm going so fast. We just got so No, we need to because people have got questions coming in. I want to yeah. make sure we hit them. So I think that's I mean, look at, look at this. You know, breast cancer, infertility, autism spectrum, low thyroid. Decreased testosterone, which is epidemic now in young men. Decreased mm -hmm. melatonin for sleep and brain. Re so these are, you know, these are not your typical medical diagnoses types of things. And I'm not saying that if you have uh, breast cancer, it's from electromagnetic radiation toxicity. But can it be? Yes. And can EMR toxicity be a factor in the development or propagation of, of cancers or tumors and things? Yeah. So, um, and the, the list is, is I'm sure, longer, but uh, this gives you an idea of the magnitude of some of the problems that, uh, that can be coming in. And these have been linked in research. This isn't speculation. Yeah. Yes. And there are some genetic variations that make you more susceptible if you have mast cell. Various infections really sensitize you to EMR, Lyme, Bartonella. I think... Uh, COVID long haul very much is part of that, I've mold that toxicity, too. heavy metal, metals. And we know from the very beginning that everybody has their, their own unique degree of sensitivity and some people more than others. And here's a list. I don't know if you need me to, to tell yeah, you sorry. this. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're on autopilot here, huh? <laughs> I went a little too fast, too many clicks. So laptops, tablets, cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, electric blankets, microwaves, TVs, electrical wiring, dimmer switches, power lines, fuse boxes, smart meters, neighbor's Wi-Fi, and uh, your neighbor's EMF in uh, condos you're next to. So, you know, the magnitude, we're just being bathed with this stuff now. And you can go through that list and hopefully we'll have a chance to give you some ideas oh. of things you can do about this. Yeah. So there's the list. And as you can look at that list, it's just, it's just everywhere. So we'll give you some practical advice here in a minute of what you can do about it. Um, the, and the, Karen was asking about keeping it up long enough to screenshot. Um, Karen, if we go too quickly, cause we're trying to save room for questions and you don't grab the screenshot we've got, you can go back to the recording of this. So as soon as the live's done, you can go back and watch it again too. Um, so we're kind of balancing, not going too fast. Yeah, I apologize. This is like drinking from a fire hydrant, but we want to give you the big picture here. Yeah. There is a healthy natural electromagnetic radiation that's generated by the earth and the earth's atmospheres. It's called the Schumann frequency. Some people refer it as the grounding or the earthing frequency. Um, <clears throat> We, I, we looked at a lot of, at this when I was with NASA trying to figure out when people leave the Earth's atmosphere, how important it is that we recreate this frequency exposure for them. And it turns out it's very important. Um, and there are some devices, uh, frequency-specific microcurrent, that we mm -hmm. can actually treat people with this frequency who are having dissociative disorders and not feeling connected. Um, so there are, there are some good natural frequencies out there and particularly the Schumann one is, is important to know about. And when we are grounding with bare feet, what I found too is that we have to make sure we're not on electrified ground because if I try to ground too close to my house, I don't feel this, this, this frequency, this healing frequency, but I recently got to walk barefoot on the beach at the ocean 
and just half an hour, my whole body feels so good. And I have um, significant chronic pain from spine injuries. And the pain just starts to drain away. The inflammation starts to drain away. I feel my nervous system resetting. Um, so I just wanted to share that that's what we're talking about is that when you get to walk barefoot on the beach or you get to go ground and you're in a forest and you're really away from all those cell towers and lots of people with cell phones on their bodies and all that stuff. And, and all the underground wires going through your yard. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what's electrifying the land around the house. And, yeah. um, and, and so there's ways we can create this even when we don't have that opportunity. And um, I'll share one of the things that I did in the airport, Roger, um, once we get there. And also, you guys, I just want to make sure you stay tuned because we're going to share a really special offer for you that's just this week only at the end um, as we're doing the Q&A. So I hope you'll stick around for that. I want to make sure you get um, a coupon code on what we're going to talk about that creates some healing fields. So let's go over just some basic things that would really help you with this. If you if you remember that list of where we're getting this exposure from, get rid of some of that stuff. So there are ways to turn on and off Wi-Fi at your home. So in my house, we only turn it on when we need it, and then we turn it off. It's not on at night. Don't keep your phone on next to your bed. Uh, use a uh, speakerphone. Don't hold it up next to your, to your head. Um, there are... Um, Measures you can take with your home and office. There are filters that filter out dirty electricity being generated through the wiring. You can get shields or blocks. There are uh, manufacturers that make um, shields that you can put things in or you can put on your lap or you can wear or whatever. And these are these are actually filtering and blocking the EMF. Um, so we need to find some other things to counteract or protect us from the EMF without blocking the function of the EMF if we want our Wi-Fi and our phones and our smart meters to work. So we're going to be telling you about the Pranon technology out of Spain. That is an exciting development that will do that. Um, so the first steps, so don't charge your phone near your bed, keep it at least eight feet away at night, put it in airplane mode at night. Don't carry your phone on your body. I do energetic testing with people and demonstrate that when they're carrying their phone, how much weaker that makes them. Mm -hmm. um, and I have uh, this little shielding purse. Yeah. That I put my phone in and it's a Faraday cage. And um, this is what I use if I have to carry my phone. But most of the time, I don't ever have it near me. That's to just get it to the car. And those do work. I've done some testing with them to make sure they actually do shield, and, and they do. Um, and uh, try not to put it on your head. So so that's yeah. mitigation for uh, for cell phones. Let's see. I think we And don't it. use the Bluetooth, the Air, or the wearables. I see a lot of yeah. people wearing, like, the Apple Watch and things like that. And, and interestingly, that's going right over the pericardium points of um and and those are gabinergic points those help produce gaba that uh, or that's part of the meridian you know a lot more about this than than i do in the energy medicine world roger but i know that this area is really important in producing gaba and so if we're putting emfs over this area it, it, it it's going to affect that and gaba is such an important calming neurotransmitter for our nervous systems i strongly encourage people just not to wear any electronics on their body yeah. And there's I'm other ways kidding. to do it. And um, um, it's just, they're so powerful now, even the battery in them are powerful and, and they have a direct effect. So, you know, put it, if you need a phone near you, if you need a pager, or if you need to watch or whatever, or your laptop, you know, don't hold them on your body. Don't wear them on your body. Put them in a soft briefcase next to you where you can hear them if they go off, but they're not in contact with you. My laptop stays three feet away and I'm hardwired. I can't even touch it, Roger. That's good. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about laptops. Laptops. Try not to put it in your lap, but there are shields if you need to that you can do. Try to avoid Wi-Fi if possible. Use hardwired connections um, and use a wired keyboard and mouse to increase the distance from the laptop. Um, That's what I do. That's what I've got here. I've got my wired keyboard. I've got my wired mouse. And um, I don't touch the laptop because there's a lot that comes off the keyboard yeah. right there. And I actually put um, 
the the Pranan devices on my phone, on my laptop. So if I am close to them, I'm protected. So I have this sitting right here yeah. on my laptop. And this is how I got to the airport. So I want to share that with people too. Okay. Um, so I think that's good on your tablets, devices, you know, stay away from the microwave, the powerful things, um, you know, the, the old kid, you know, opening the refrigerator and spending 10 minutes standing in front of it, trying to find a snack, probably not a good idea. Um, keep your tablets in airplane mode when possible. Um, so these are just common sense things. Once you understand what you're up against here, I don't think you need anyone to tell you what to do. You just realize I need to keep a distance. I need to keep a uh, keep these things um, off when possible. Yeah. And one of my tricks is to put the phone, get pulled up what I need, like text. I can put my phone in airplane mode, write my responses, and then I can take it out of airplane mode, put it away from me for it to send the text. And you can do that with emails and things. Um, there's a setting on iPhone. I don't know iPhone well, but you guys, you can look it up. There's a setting on iPhone you have to turn on for that to work. So if you look up how to have um, an iPhone send send messages when you reconnect to Wi-Fi, it'll uh, it'll tell you what to do. I just don't remember what it was. Okay. All right. So there are uh, things you can do. If the if the smart meter on the outside of your house is right next to your main living area or bedroom, you might want to see if they'll move it for you. You know, make sure the power lines don't enter your home near your bedroom. <clears throat> make sure your fuse box isn't near where you're sleeping at night or just on the other side of the wall. So try and, uh, you know, try and keep some distance. If you're in an apartment. And you can move your bed if you have to. Yes. We've got a move case about that. Yeah. I don't know if we'll have time, but I had a 14-year-old boy who. They rearranged his bedroom for his birthday and they put his bed in a corner that turned out to be right next to all the electricity conduit pipes and everything. And he went, uh, he basically became uh, psychotic. He started hallucinating and got weird and they took him everywhere. And And long story short, we finally, after they failed, uh, figured that out, moved his bed back where it was and he was fine within a couple of weeks. So it's a, you can get these uh, trimeters and that's an mm -hmm. important point that you can actually go measure where in your house the electrical and the magnetic and the radio fields are and and uh, see where you have safe zones and see where you have keep away zones. Um, so they're called trimeters. And, and we've uh, got a link to all of this. If you um, find in the comments, our team posted this for you guys and you can find the meter Dr. Rogers talking about. You'll find the hardwired um all the hardwired equipment and everything that we're discussing and the shielding products, but really want to make sure you, you learn about these Pranon products because they've been a game changer. So let's, why don't we jump ahead to Pranon? All oh, right. Page me, 23 on the slides. Okay. Let me, let's, let me get us there. Here so we Pranon go. Well, why don't we start with 22 so we can. Okay. Yeah. Talk about what it is. Okay. So. Pranin is a company out of Spain. I was introduced to it by Dr. Jim Oshman, who wrote the book Energy Medicine. And he's a physicist and he came across this company. He did a bunch of research on their products and he called me very excited. He said, this is, you need to get this. And we contacted them and, and, and Pranin at the time was not distributing in the United States. And they've now opened up to distribution here in the United States, but it's a very unique device. It's, it's, um, uh, it's passive. It doesn't require batteries or or power. It lasts forever. Um, and and I put in the note here as I was trying to understand how it works. And the the inventor has been very kind to try and explain it to me. But as, as I understand it, it yeah, I say it generates a scalar field. I now think it perhaps enhances or strengthens your own body's production of scalar energy. I think scalar energy is, uh, and this is my own opinion now, people. Is is the energy of creation? I think it's the it's the universal energy, and as living human biologic beings, I think we are connected to that. I think we produce that, and I think these pranin devices enhance, promote, or strengthen our own scalar field, um, <clears throat> and basically by doing so, creates an energy that protects us from the damage of EMR. Um, no maintenance required. 
I've tested it in a variety of ways and it works very well. And it works very differently than the usual products on the market that are designed to filter, block, change the electromagnetic frequencies that are coming at you. This doesn't do any of that. It lets that stay the same. It's just protecting you. Um, and I've tested that. Dr. Oshman's tested that. Um, it's a valid statement. But beyond that, um, my ability to explain the mechanics is very limited. But I'm very impressed with this. And we're excited to, to make them available to people. When I've read the studies, um, they, they are pretty meaty <laughs> in terms of the, the, the information. Uh, Dr. Roger, I know I shared with you before, I'm just always a skeptic first, properly because of my own health journey and spending tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars on things that did nothing, that didn't work, that didn't help, including um, what were supposed to be mitigating stickers and pendants and on all of these different things. For EMS, but just everything with my health. And so even when I trust Neil Nathan a lot, and when he said, you know, you need to check this out. If Dr. Roger Velika says that it works, it works. And he said, I trust him. And so I still went and did my research. And when I read the trials and, and looked at the research and, and especially they have video documentation of measuring bioelectric field in the body and it changing the presence of the cell phone and then it normalizing when they put one of the devices on the cell phone. That is what got my attention. And that, that's when I said, okay, I'm gonna try it. And I got the little pocket one first and we'll look at these different ones so people know what's available. Um, but I just put that link up there for you all. And I'm gonna drop this in the comments as well. And um, that way you can click that link and you can go and look at all the trials and all that as well. And these devices, I've not seen them go on sale, Roger. Have they ever gone on sale before? No. Okay. It's so we're going to offer, we're going to offer the first and only sale that's happened. And I'm going to give you that code here in a little bit. If you want to try these, um, this is just a, we, we can only offer it for this week because um, there's just not a lot of more. We don't make money off of it once we pay our team and all of that, but they're so helpful. And I really want you guys to have a chance to, um, to try this out. So let's show them these different options. So the first one there is the Phi Wave that's um, this, this size. It's like a credit card size. I'm trying to find the camera here. And it, you just carry it around in your pocket. Um, mm -hmm. And it works very well. It has a treatment radius. I wrote all this down of about 2.6 meters. So it's going to protect you in a 2.6 meter range. Um, and what I did with that one, Roger, was I stuck it in my pillow. Yeah. So it was right by my head um, when I was in a hotel. Now I lost it, unfortunately. That, but I have I've tried them all. Yeah, you're, I've tried them all. It's easy to lose. So, And they're, they're not inexpensive, folks. Um, the next one is the tower, the biospace. And this actually creates this um, scalar energy enhancement in a 11 meter radius. So, um, so you, you could put it in a space, you can put it in your office, your bedroom, in our house, we put it in the center of our activity area in our living room kitchen area during the day. And then we carry it upstairs and put it in the space between the bedrooms at night. Uh, I have them in my office here. So this is covering a, um, a dome, a circular space, it's, it equals about 4,000 square feet. Um, so this is something, so so if you do take the item out of your pocket at night, uh, you're still covered in in, the, in your bedroom space. Um, and I just want this out in case everybody's got to go. That's your 10% off code is mast cell 360 If you guys want to try this, I'll put it up again, but yeah. sometimes people have to get ready for meetings and stuff. So I just wanted to make sure. They so have there's it. one for the phone. There's one for, um, there's pendants, there's jewels, there's um, pendants so you can wear. There's a travel one that uh, is particularly good if you're driving an electric vehicle to have it in the mm -hmm. vehicle with you. There's ones that you can wear around your neck. Um, so these are the different ones that are available at current time. They're continuing. The travel one just came out a few months ago. So they're, they're working on expanding this. But these are, these are really excellent. 
And um, I think um, if you just want to go to the summary chart and open it up to questions or whatever, yeah. I know we're, we're using I'd love to stuff. talk a little bit about my experience using them. Okay. Um, so I got the pocket one first. And of course, again, it comes and I'm like, eh, we'll yeah. see if it does anything. And, and I, I, you know, take it out and I, I bring it over in front of my laptop and I notice right away the feeling of inflammation decreasing in my hands that I normally have when I'm working, even though I'm wired and I've got my, my um, keyboard. And um, like I said, I, I was sleeping with it in my pillow, especially when I travel because my house, I've got pretty low EMF or, you know, modern house. But when you go to a hotel, there's Wi-Fi routers everywhere. There's, you know, everybody's got their devices and all of that. And then what I found is, um, well, then, then from there, I lost the, the pocket one. So I thought, well, let me get the pendant because that way I can just put it on and wear it. And I love that pendant. And um, I'll wear that when I go out, when I'm going shopping. If I'm, um, I actually went to a live show. And it was really nice to have because there's so many people with cell phones and everything, and you're always surrounded by these things. So then the next thing I got was the 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 large one that you showed. The Can tower. you show that again? The tower. Yeah. Yeah, I got the tower. Now that when I'm home, that sits in front of my laptop because I work online all day. And um, that I noticed was more powerful than the pocket or the pendant, and I felt a stronger healing field. The other thing that's happened, Roger, and you know, there may have been a few factors, but I have become less EMF sensitive over time. And at this point, and it's been since I think May that I started using them. So it's been about seven months. Um, I used to never be able to be on Wi-Fi, and I still prefer to work with an ethernet connection. But sometimes I'm on the road and sometimes I, that's my only option to come on and, and do a Facebook live. So, or, or do my meetings. And so I'm working on Wi-Fi right now and I'm okay. I mean, I'm clearly articulating. I can form words. My legs aren't giving out. I'm standing right now. And so that's huge for me. It's not my preference, but I have this sitting on my laptop. And I wore, I also had this on my body going through the airport. Normally airports are pretty hard on me. Um, I can get migraines. And, and a couple of times I had to go over the really huge screens on an escalator and there was no way to get away. And my legs gave out when I got off the escalator. Um, that didn't happen. And I had to go under one of those great big screens. So it is helping if you have that kind of level of EMS sensitivity, and we've had some people who've tried it and really liked it. Um, so I, yeah, I just wanted to share my own experience because I think that that helps. And I really did not expect, even after seeing the trial, I still thought, let's see, I don't know that it's gonna work. And that's how I approach everything. Um, I was really surprised. Yeah, everybody's different. It's not gonna cure everything. and. Not yeah, everything is due to EMR, but one of the first conferences I was speaking about this at a frequency microcurrent conference last spring, and a woman came up and got the uh, the pendant uh, at the end of the day, and the next morning she came running up so excited and informed me that the chronic vertigo dizziness she had been having for a couple of years had totally resolved overnight with her wearing this pendant, which tells us that EMR was playing a big role in her dizziness. But I mean, things like that, very exciting. It is exciting. And, and, and if, you, if you're living in mold, you may not see as much right away. You may have to get out of mold. It's Again, it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to cure everything. But it's a, it's a big benefit. And I've noticed healing accelerating. Um, we've got a lot of questions. Why don't we do some of these questions? Oh, I've Got to pop that code back up for people. And then we'll see. Um, maybe we could cover. You've got a couple more slides that we could see. The slides are just a summary to inspire them to take this seriously. So, okay. Sounds good. Good. Let's go to questions. Let's go to questions. Um, so, we had a few that were pre submitted. Roger, let me grab those here. And we've got a lot of live questions. Um, so, this person lives where their smart meters installed. 
um, besides sleeping, also working from home. I know we've talked about a lot of things people can use to protect themselves. I'm, in addition to the shielding that you can do, it's really hard to shield those smart meters properly. Mm -hmm. um, so, so my experience with this is to sit and move your bed, use a meter to see where the high CMF levels are. Um, do you think these devices could help in this scenario? Absolutely. I think they can. I mean, you're right. Fine. Get a trimeter, see where the smart meter fields are. See if you can spend most of your time in the in the lesser exposure but i think that the tower for your home and your bedroom and and uh, just to be sure again wearing a pendant so that um if you're out of the range of the of the tower you could still have protection and i think this kind of applies to a few of these pre-submitted questions they were all about protection and minimizing um but this one in terms of um what to recommend to help herself and disabled son, house backs up the power lines. The one thing I found with the grounding mats, and I love grounding mats, is that we need to lower the EMFs first and mitigate some of that. Because my experience was um, when I moved into a higher EMF area before I knew much about EMFs, I was very confused why my grounding mat all of a sudden didn't feel good. And then what I learned was that I was becoming an antenna for that radiation to ground. And it may have been dirty electricity, Roger. I don't know enough about the physics of this to know if that works in terms of the kinds of um, radiation fields we get off of cell phones. Does that make sense to you, what, what I'm describing with the grounding map? It does, and there's there's so much we still just are learning. I mean, I in a situation like this or many of these, I mean, I would do everything I could. I would, you know, I would, clean up the dirty electricity in my house with some of the plug-in filters, the Stetzer filters, those sorts of things. Uh, I would make sure the, the phones and the devices are, are on airplane mode or safe or shielded. Um, the grounding mats are, are good. They're exposing you to the, the Schumann frequency, so that's helpful, but they're not really protecting you, I think, and again, this is my opinion, that much against the harmful EMR. So that's why you need something like the pranan as well. So I would frankly do all of that. And once I did remediate some of the EMFs at that point, I was able to go back to my grounding mat. So now I have one I stand on when I'm working and I have a grounding sheet. Um, so just keep that in mind in terms and, of- And I would use the trimeter. I would test your grounding mat. I mean, yeah. you know, make sure it's not made in China or something. So- Is it really grounding or is it- Right, or is it just producing more EMF? Yeah. Same thing for far infrared saunas. There are far infrared saunas that we've tested that are very safe uh, and have, you know, don't produce bad EMR. And there are others that are just toxic. So you've really got yeah. to be careful. Yeah. We have a whole thing on that. If anybody's looking for a sauna on our, our blog, because I had the same problem. I kept trying saunas and the EMFs were so high. Um, a you know, patient of yours had a lovely comment here. I just wanted to pop it up. Says you're an incredible healer. Could barely put words in a sentence when I went to him. Um, okay, and then let's, <laughs> um, and so many people shared their sensitivity level. We got a lot of people who are up at between an eight and ten on EMF sensitivity, mm -hmm. and then the other side of the equation, we have people who just really aren't sure those EMFs are affecting them. So I'm going to come down to some of those. Um, and, that's, and that's all true. That's all true. It's hard to tell. Some people are more sensitive than others. Absolutely. Um, I like this from Timberly. We talked about the lights flickering in the lamp and she says I'm flickering. Um, but there's a lot here in terms of distance. Can we talk about that? As Talia is talking about She's in a um, complex with 200 apartments. There's a cell phone tower 500 feet away and then an airport 10 minutes away. And I didn't even think about airport radar before. And I, I don't think there's a whole lot different answers in what we've been given for all these people. You know, may, get it, borrow, rent, purchase. I don't know what they cost now. Get a trimeter and map out. And you can you can even do that with you know, with your computer screens, you know, some people can feel it, but you can, you know, when you get two feet away from your computer, 
the EMR just totally drops off. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of this is approximation. So this fact that, you know, the cell phone tires 500 feet away, but on what side, what does it have to material get to get through? So better just measure it and see where your problem is. But at the same time, I would, I would still do everything we're talking about to try and minimize it. No, and, then, and then if that's not good enough, it might be time to move. move. Yeah. 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 I mean, I had to do that when I was living um, close to downtown. So Monty's got an interesting question about CPAP machines. Do you think about CPAP and EMFs? Yeah. Um, it is electrical. It's going to be generating a field. Again, you could see how how close you can safely put it if you use the trimeter. You know, you go up close to the CPAP machine and then, you know, use the hosing to put it a few feet away from you if you can. So, again, the, the deal there is to achieve whatever distance from the actual machine and where it's plugged in as possible. And then we could put one of these in between the CPAP or, or slip it in the pillow yeah. uh, on the side. That's yeah. what I kind of did was I had it next to my head inside yeah. the pillow. Perch. It's going to create a space. It doesn't, It. I mean, that's... <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's almost placebo effect in a way because you know it's between you and the bad thing. So, you know, it's comforting, right. but it creates but if you a field. It creates so it doesn't creates matter if it's on that side or this side, we're going right. to be okay. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's not physically blocking it. Right. Yeah, and that's yeah. what you, if you had something that was actually blocking or shielding or filtering, yeah, you'd want that between you. But prana is just creating this energy around you that makes it safe for you. Well, this is what I was alluding to before from Tiffany. Thanks for sharing this, Tiffany. If we don't knowingly feel the effects of EMFs, um, I'm going to, I just realized it silenced my phone. Um, if we don't knowingly feel those effects, Dr. Roger, how much are they affecting us? I don't know how to quantify that at this time. Um, we know what they can do. We know that everybody has individual sensitivities. A lot of people who come in and I'm doing my testing in the office and they're having, they, they don't think it's EMF, but they are, they're here for a reason. They're here because they're tired or they have headaches or they don't feel good or they're brain foggy or whatever. And, um, and I do find other things, you know, there's Lyme or mold or whatever viruses, post COVID stuff, whatever. Um, but in the first part of the testing, I see if the, I check to see if EMF sensitivity is part of an issue and is it going to interfere with the healing? And I address that right at the start. And it's not everybody. It's maybe one in, you know, six to 10 people. Um, as I do the examination and the testing, it turns out that EMF is a significant factor for them. And they're not aware that EMS is a significant factor. They just know that they don't feel good. Um, so, um, so if it's not an obvious thing, like like the, uh, Beth is talking about, where you know she can tell when she gets near something that affects her, her legs go weak, etc. That's pretty dramatic. Um, there are there are people. I just talked with someone on the phone out in Grand Junction, Colorado, who's who's having similar effects and. I just, I mailed him the pendant. We'll see what that does for him. But um, yeah, so some people it's obvious and some people it's totally not obvious, but that doesn't mean that the potential isn't there for it to have an effect. It's just um, hidden. It's silent other than your symptoms. And the other problem for me, so I knew about the EMFs could be a problem for a good three or four years before I took it seriously. I was hearing about it and reading about it. And I can't tell. I don't think so. But then what I learned was that I had so many complicating factors. It was hard to tease out what was what. And finally, I just, I needed a breakthrough and I decided to just try it. You know, I just, well, let me just try reducing the EMF, see what's happening. Because we had, you know, Bluetooth security cameras that we weren't for security, but to check on the dogs, you know, when we were gone and, um, the, the Wi-Fi router was close to the bedroom and all this stuff going on. And it wasn't until I got it mitigated and felt how better I felt that then I realized how it was impacting me and those immediate impacts. And then it, you know, my sensitivity increased with a car accident that worsened, um, 
my cerebral spinal fluid drainage. But I think if you're not sure, you can kind of go back to these symptoms of um, EMF toxicity. And so if you have any of those symptoms, it's probably worthwhile looking at. It's not that it's the only thing that can cause it, but it would be worthwhile looking at. Or if you're dealing with these conditions um, and you know, if you have those contributors to the sensitivity, which includes MCAS, um, mold toxicity, Lyme and Bartonella, it's going to accelerate the healing is what I've seen when we're in that, that population group. Is that what you're seeing? Yes. That sums it up very well. Well, we talked about radius a little bit. Can we go over, um, Taylor's one of our regulars here. And she's wondering about the radius on the different devices. And what I would like to do is um, just jot it down very simply, and then I'm going to pop it up on the screen for everybody so they can grab a screenshot of that. And since this is from Spain, the measurements are in meters. Okay. Um, okay. And if you go to the Pranen website, um, there's a lot of information, but it's in Spanish, so you'll need to do a translation. The tower, the biospace tower, the radius is 11 meters. The travel device um, that is good for the in the car or while you're traveling, that radius is seven meters. The Phi waves, the pocket device. I'm sorry, which one? The pendant was seven? The travel. Oh, the travel. Okay. The travel is seven. The Phi waves is 2.6 meters. So that's the one we talk about putting in our pocket. And then there's a jewel and a pendant that you wear around your neck. That radius is um, two meters. And the and phone. The, sorry, the phone one, yeah. The phone one, it has a different phrase. And I'm sorry, I'm not sure I can explain this. I may have to get back with, with the owner. It says it has a 27 meter operating range. Okay. Um, Which sounds like it would have the, the widest, but I, and I do have mine with my phone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put unclear. It says 27. I mean, certainly yeah. strong enough to cover any personal use of your phone that you're going to be doing. But what I'm finding is that um, I do think it helps me use my phone more, but I don't get the same kind of, when I bring this phone close to me, I'm not, I, I feel inflammation if I mm -hmm. get it too close. So I'm going to leave it over there. I'm not getting, I feel like it's helping me use my phone, but I'm not getting the same effect as when I have this in with me. The travel one. That's the newer one. one I think it's stronger. Here. Yeah. It is stronger. And, and yeah. I know the travel and the whole house have a little different technology in terms of. It's the newer, it's the newest one with the upgraded the, technology. Yeah. yeah. So I'm feeling a stronger um, field off of it. But what I did with the phone one was I put it on the back of my phone inside my case. Yes. Um, and, and that way it's always there because when I just put it on there without it being inside the case, sometimes it was coming off and I didn't want to lose it. Yeah, so I, yeah, I wanted to show people how I did that. Well, and and what I do, frankly, is I I I have a personal device on me, and I just keep my phone at a distance, and I let the personal device protect me, regardless of what the phone or the computer or anything else is doing. So the strongest is the biospace tower. I wanted to put those in, and then the the. Um, the, and then the travel, travel is next. Yeah. Yeah. The travel is the, and because these are the new technology, this is the yeah. second strongest. Yeah. And then, probably and the, the pocket. And the, yeah. The pocket, the five waves pocket, then the pendant, and then the mm -hmm. phone seems to be the, doesn't have as strong of a healing feel, but it, it seems to work a little different. A little it different. Could be. I don't, I don't have, I don't know. Okay. Well, we're going to, um, we've got just a couple more questions here, Dr. Roger. I just want to make sure everybody knows that the coupon code, it's MassCell360. It only works on our store at MassCell360.com slash Pranon, P-R-A-N-A-N. 
and you can get 10% off your prawn on purchase. It's just for the prawn on purchases. Um, we do have a code for 20% off the supplements if you're looking for that, and that's through this month. Um, but the one for the prawn on is through Thursday, this Thursday at midnight. So I just want to make sure people don't, um, don't miss that. Uh, just a couple other things here. Kennedy's asking about gas versus electric cars. Well, if we're specifically just talking about EMR and EMF, uh, I would say gasoline. Um, there's certainly a lot of other considerations in terms of what kind of car you purchase, but, um, and even the modern day cars that are gas still are crammed full of electronics. Um, but the, but the exposure from uh, the electric cars, a significant exposure. Really high. I've had people really argue with me about this and we've done the tri-meter testing. And I mean, frankly, you're, you're, you're riding inside a battery um, mm -hmm. when you're in an electric car. And I just can't see that that would be good to do. Um, and on an aside, I think all the components that have to go into making an electric car do not make them as environmentally friendly as everybody yeah. wants to believe they are. So yeah. a lot of politics, a lot of different opinions there. So let's just keep it to the EMR component. But um, uh, EMR... Uh, what you want to do is is buy a car that was made in uh, 1965. And, you'll be okay. <laughs> and hopefully you're a mechanic and you can fix it yes, yourself. Yes, it doesn't yes. have any mold. And uh, Well, I, I do have a, a vehicle that has the Bluetooth and it's got um, the satellite connection. And I asked them to disconnect it. And then after I paid, they told me, oh, we, we, you know, after I signed the paperwork, they said, well, we can't disconnect it. We, they told you wrong. It's like, what? And so what I did was I, I put this um, above the visor and it probably doesn't matter. So sometimes it's above the visor, sometimes it's in the cup holder, but I bring this, I, this always sits in my car and, and um, I took it with me and a friend of mine got a Tesla. And, and that's, so, that's the travel one, just for everyone to understand. The, this is the travel one. This is the second strongest one. So it would be interesting to take the biospace tower, but I took this with me in his Tesla to see what would happen. And we went on a five minute drive. And before we got out of the parked, I said, stop here. Let me out. I, I've had, that's all I can do. And so it, it got me five minutes in, in the electric car. Um, but it gets me just fine in my car, fortunately. Now, people are more sensitive. I am now. It, it it took me a while for for my EMF sensitivities to improve, but it was interesting they were improving. We've covered so much ground. We've got a lot of questions left. Um, do you have a few minutes, or do you have a hard stop? I want to make sure I respect your time. I have I have a few minutes. Okay. I, I actually actually took today off, so I'm at your oh, disposal yes. here. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for being here with us. Um, Susan was asking about the code. It is good until tonight. I'm sorry, until Thursday at midnight. So let me pop that back up again. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. To, so today's Tuesday, the 12th. So Thursday should be December 14th. Um, but if I've got that mixed up, let me know. Um, but till Thursday at, at midnight is what we're looking at. And then, um, let's see. So we talked about the cars. Uh, how about, so people are asking about the satellite television dis dishes that get mounted on roofs. They do. They're they're um, they're collecting the signals and concentrating it into the into the uh, cables that go to the television set. So it'd be better when I was uh, in high school. We only had three channels until my parents got a satellite, and it was out uh, in the yard and then ran up to the house. So if you were gonna do that, if you had that space, would that be a better option, Roger? Or does that make it Again, this it's, it's a distance issue for a lot of these things. So anytime you can move something further away, that's in a source of electromagnetic radiation, because it, it, some of these things drop off pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. They do, and that's the, yeah. the nice one well, that we come, we're back to the meter. Um, Susan's asking, is the coverage spherical? Yes. Okay. So at that radius, that 11 meter radius 
is the radius of the sphere. So it goes around that entire dome that it creates. So the entire dome that it creates, the sphere, uh, the space, according to their research, is about 4,000 square feet contained in that sphere. For the tower one? Yes. Yeah, that's the, the big one. And so I'm realizing this would be really nice to carry kind of in the center of my body is then it's making the sphere around yeah. there. Because my I would expect that some of the protection could drop off also with distance. I'm, that yeah. would be interesting. I don't know if we, do we know that? I don't, I've not seen them research that. Um, I think they're measuring how far out you get full protection, whether it extends full beyond that and drops off. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. And, and we've got a question here. So I'm pretty sure um, here from Kennedy, the electric panel in the basement could certainly be causing fatigue. Hmm. And uh, Elizabeth asking, can we test ourselves to see how sensitive we are to EMFs or EMRs? I, I don't know where you would go to do that. Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. Um, the, uh, I mean, the question before this about being down in the basement where the routers and things are, I mean, I had a, a very significant case of a, of a, <clears throat> he was the uh, computer specialist for his company and he landed his dream job is to be the head IT guy for this big company, but they, they put his office down in the basement where all the routers were, all the machinery. So he was in the room with all the machinery and was, and he came to see me because he just wasn't feeling good, tired, rain foggy, all of that. And, um, and I, he walked in, he had two different cell phones on him. He had three pagers on his belt. You know, he was wired for sound and mm -hmm. I tested him and I, I basically just had him put all of that stuff off his body onto a, a soft briefcase. So if something went off, he could hear it, but I had him, you know, keep it five feet away, set it in the corner of the room. And then I had him move his office out of the basement to, you know, out of that room and everything cleared up. He did fine. So we have to be alert to that, that kind of situation. So someone who's got their basement in the office where all the, all the electrical stuff and I forget exactly what it says that that could definitely be a risk. Yeah. And I'm so glad Carla asked this. What's our return period on the Pranon products? We do have occasional people who send them back and say they didn't think it helped. And it, as long as they've kept the packaging intact so that we can resell it, we have to resell it at a, at a discount because it was opened and, and used, but you, the using of it doesn't change it or drain it or anything. So it's still perfectly good. So we will resell them, but, but we do charge a, some sort of you know restocking fee on the return, but otherwise we'll we'll take returns as long as they they have all the original packaging with it. Okay, so keep your packaging, everybody. And um, is there a time frame for that? Like most companies are thirty days. Yeah, it would need to be within a month or two because by then, if if you're if if you know it's either helping or it's not. So okay. Yeah, I don't know that we've got a hard deadline, but you know, I don't want someone sending us one back two years down the road because the other thing, of course, is the Prana company keeps updating it and we would want to keep up with the current technology. And I want to make sure we get this in from our, our good friend, Scott Forsgren. And uh, if anybody doesn't know Scott, he has an incredible um, podcast called Better Health Guy. And I, that is the one podcast that I have listened to the most uh, just incredible information. And so he's at, he does, as we know, a lot of muscle testing, the ART testing. Um, he's um, highly trained by Dr. Klinghart. And he's asking, would you recommend against the practitioner wearing the jewel during ART muscle testing or generally muscle testing, or could it bring coherence to the testing process? That's a very interesting question. Scott, that's a fantastic question. I did uh, Klinghart's training, and then I now currently do the, the field control testing from uh, Dr. Yurkovsky that works really well for me. And I've tried it both ways. At first, I was afraid that wearing this would somehow 
um, prevent me from being able to discern the energy changes on the person I was testing. Um, and I, I typically take all, you know, metal and batteries and things like that off my body and off my patient's body while I'm testing them. But I have found that wearing the five ways while I do the testing, I think it's actually enhancing my ability to discern and get clear testing. And this is partly why I say, I think what this is actually doing is strengthening my own scalar field while I'm wearing this. So I think my, my connection with the energy of creation is actually stronger while I'm wearing this. So I have gone from not wearing it to now wearing it while I do my testing. That's wonderful. Um, could, just three more questions here. We can do these a little quickly. Uh, oh, I just wanted to share this. So Jacqueline said she's going to get the jewel one. She's been having bad EMR symptoms and her heart is stopping. That's not good. I really hope this helps you, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, please let us know what happens. Yes. Uh, we'd love to hear anybody who, who tries these out. We we both love to know what you're experiencing, what you notice. Um, and then Susan, will it help? us to clarify which symptoms might be called by mold or EMFs? Well, in a very simplistic way, um, you know, if you, when you start wearing a pranin, whatever symptoms get better, were obviously related to or due to EMR and mm -hmm. whichever ones don't get better or not. Um, so like the lady who wore the pendant overnight and came back and said, my dizziness is gone. She was so excited. And it was clear, well, that must mean that your dizziness was related to your EMR sensitivity. And then Tiffany's asking, oh, let me step back on that for just a second. Um, what if somebody's still exposed to mold? I found that it's very challenging to tell what's what because the nervous system's so dysregulated. Do you have a thought on that, Roger? Reasonable expectations. Yeah, there's there's three ways to get symptoms for mold. One is um, that um, you can you can actually have a mold in infection um, mm -hmm. that is infecting you, causing an immune response. Secondly, you can be being exposed to the mold mycotoxins, and it's the toxins mm -hmm. that are creating effect. And third, you can actually simply be allergic to the mold. So you mm -hmm. can have one or all three of those causing symptoms with you. And this is, this is similar to what I said early on, where, where sometimes I, I find with patients who are complex biotoxin patients that we need to address the EMR at the beginning if we want to have an effective treatment. And mold, I think, is, is one of those. But there's, there's some people where the, the mold itself or the COVID long haul or whatever is so dominating the scenario that you can't even perceive the EMR effect until you address some of the mold toxicity first, and then you'll find, oh, we've got EMR that we need to address. So I'm continually looking for it. Every patient I test, the early part of the testing is first to look at EMR, EMF sensitivity to see if that needs to be addressed first or later. Um, everybody's different. Every illness is different. How you're being affected by the mold is different. So the main thing is just to, re to, to know and understand that EMR is likely a component to the illness associated with mold toxicity, but um, I, I address everybody individually. So this is one um, where I can't say a rule that you have to do it a certain way. Every, everybody's different. We have covered so much. I think I got the bulk of the questions. Let's wrap up with this one. Is there a shelf life? No, they're totally passive. They're not powered. They don't wear out. They'll, they'll work forever. Just don't lose it like I did. I lost the pocket one. <laughs> and other than that, I mean, you don't want to drop them, but I, uh, a little clumsy. I've dropped this multiple times. I can't promise it's not going to break, but mine has not broken. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, and some people missed at the beginning, you talked about they're activated in the presence of the EMFs and that's what kind of turns it on, but there's no moving parts. There's nothing to break. It's, it's quite interesting. I think these are going to really take off, but um, right now in the United States, um, Dr. Roger, his website and our website are only two places to get this. I believe, is that still correct? Yes. Okay. 
So um, I just want to remind everybody that we're running 10% off until Thursday, December 14th at midnight. And you can use that code at massa360.com slash pranon. Um, so if you want to try it out, this is your time. There's not been a sale before. Um, and we just can do it for a limited time. Um, but we really want to offer that for you all to give you a chance to try it. I am so grateful that you joined us today. It's always a pleasure. And I've looked forward um, since I knew you were coming on to, to having this conversation with you. It's my pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And I, I wish you the best of health. Thanks so much, everyone. We are going to be um, off for the holidays here for just two weeks. And then we're going to be back on January. Um, let me check for you. We are back, I believe, January 9th. And so keep an eye on our Facebook page. You'll have the topics. We've got Resimax coming up for you and so much else. Um, and it's wonderful to be with you as a community. We're going to have other posts and things to keep everyone engaged and um, involved in the community in between. Thank you again. I hope you all have wonderful holidays. Take really good care of yourself and make sure to check in with our um, travel and holiday tips to take care of your health when you have MCAS. So we'll see you all soon. Take care.